The House is expected to vote this week on the GOP's new proposal to fund aid to Israel by slashing the IRS budget. Well, there's a new report from the Congressional Budget Office that said this bill would add $26 billion to the deficit. So let's discuss. I'm joined now by Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts. Senator, I am so glad you're here, and I want to start on this very subject, because this idea that some of your colleagues have to slash the IRS's budget to pay for funding to Israel, according to the IRS commissioner, the money they want to take is money that goes directly to, to, to studying, to going after tax evaders, the richest tax evaders in this country. And he says, we'd be leaving money on the table if we just let them get off. Exactly right. So look, this is nothing more than a cynical plot by the Republicans to try to exploit the Hamas terrorist bombings to see if they can hook onto that their longtime desire to let the wealthiest tax cheats get away free. And we just can't let that happen. The best estimate from the IRS is that for every dollar spent on going after those wealthy tax cheats, the American public gets about $6 back in money collected. I don't know many places where you can get that kind of six to one ratio, but my view is we need to make the wealthy tax cheats pay their fair share. And we need the Republicans to come with us on a serious plan for the funding that needs to be done in the supplemental bill. Use the war to hook up tax cheats. Then I want to yeah. ask about the war in Ukraine, because other colleagues of yours that want to pull money from support to Ukraine arguing we shouldn't spend that money over here, we should be spending it over there, we should be spending it here. Do they understand that if Putin wins this war against Ukraine, he won't be done. And it will cost the U.S. significantly more when he goes to expand. That is exactly the right way to look at this. This is Putin seeing how far he can go. And if he can overrun Ukraine, he has no intention of stopping uh, there. This is a time when we need to stick with our allies all across Europe, the allies around the world who are there to try to support Ukraine. We need to be doing our part in that. The Ukrainians are on the ground fighting their hearts out. I was just there in August. They make inch by inch by inch progress. They are pushing Russia back, and that's exactly what we need to support them to do. That is in their interests, but it is also in our long-term interests. Are you hopeful that there will be a proposal that will get the aid to Israel and Ukraine that's needed? Yes. And our plan right now is to keep those married to each other uh, so that both of them go forward together. And I want to be clear, it's not just Democrats who do that. We actually have some Republicans who are strong on that in the Senate as well. We just need the House to sober up and the House leadership to get serious, stop playing games, Let's get an emergency funding bill that is the emergency funding bill that our nation needs. I want to ask you about our complicated economy, because the truth is experts predicted that right now we would be in a pretty awful recession. But we're not. Yeah. The economy has actually picked up. Unemployment is at 3.8. However, life is not easy here. Inflation is still a problem and life is expensive. People don't feel good about the economy and saying to them, well, we could have or should have been in a recession doesn't make them feel better. So how should the administration address this? Because, you know, the economy is a top thing people vote on. Absolutely. But, you know, I want to make a slightly different point here. Right now, with the very high interest rates that the Fed has imposed, Jerome Powell has has made life more expensive for many Americans. You have to remember this part of it. The cost of buying a home, the cost of renting. Uh, nobody's going to invest in building more housing all because of high interest rates. It's more expensive to buy a car because of high interest rates, more expensive if you carry a balance on your credit card. So we've got this really high interest rate environment. And today the Fed decided not to raise interest rates more, which I think is the right thing to do. But listen to what Jerome Powell said. He still talked about that maybe we need more softening in the labor economy. 
which is just Fed speak for saying need to push people out of work. I think that is the wrong way to approach this economy. Here, I want to give big props to the president of the United States, because what he has done is first, he has invested in America. That's why this economy is so strong. Largest infrastructure package that we've had for decades, a big investment in the climate fight. By the way, paid for by a 15 percent minimum corporate tax. And then this president has gone after junk fees. And you know, junk fees sound like a little thing. They're mm -hmm. not a little thing. There's something that has taken a bite out of America's middle class working families here, a bite there. So we're talking about everything from fees on concert tickets to uh, uh, fees on check overdrafts to fees on credit cards. The president and his administration are trying to put a cop on the beat, trying to say, we're not going to have that kind of stuff going on anymore. What you see is what you're going to pay. The latest on that has been now around retirement. The president's administration has put forward a new rule, fiduciary rule, that says that retirees are not going to have to pay junk fees. People okay. who roll but money then, Senator, into a retirement account. Yeah, go ahead. What should be done then to address inflation? Because it's still a problem, and Jay Powell doesn't have a lot of other tools. Well, let's keep in mind that inflation has come down substantially. But you've always got to make sure what tool you're using addresses the problem that you've got. Why has inflation come down so substantially, even though... Unemployment has not gone up as Jay Powell tried to push this economy toward. Well, it's partly because of what were the, the reasons that prices went up. A big one, of course, was the supply chain kinks. Another one has been corporate price gouging. Another has been rising commodity prices, partly with the war in Ukraine, which we found ways around it now, partly in energy. So there are a lot of factors that Jerome Powell has admitted to me in hearings that raising the interest rates will not affect, but they do affect inflation overall. As those wind down, we've seen inflation come down, and that is the right thing. You know, we can't just keep raising costs for consumers in saying, as Jerome Powell has tried to do, he wants to put people out of work because that's how he wants to bring down inflation. Hasn't worked that way so far, and I don't think it's going to work that way in the future. And the good news is the labor market is very strong right now. We just yes. saw the auto workers hopefully have a deal done, which is yes. good news. Senator, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it.